For some time now, I've been looking for a way to improve how I engrave and mark metals in the home workshop. I've tried engraving in the milling machine, I've tried stamping, and I've tried pantographs, but to date, nothing has really offered the resolution or the precision that I've been looking for. That is, until now. Fibre lasers have been around for a while, but they've always been expensive. Recently, they've started dropping in price to the point where now they're becoming within reach of the hobbyist in the home workshop. So, when the good people at EM Smart reached out to me and offered me a laser to try, I jumped at the chance. In today's video, we're going to be looking at this machine to see if it lives up to expectations and answering the question, can a fibre laser be a valuable and useful addition to the home workshop? So let's start by taking a look at the machine itself. The model is the EM Smart Basic One and it's a 20 watt fibre laser. Now the laser source lives in the base here. It's transmitted through a fibre optic cable to the head where the beam is directed out of a lens onto the workpiece below. It's got a solid all metal construction weighing in at 11.5 kilos and it's got a reasonably small footprint at 435 by 305 by 525 millimetres. The front of the machine has two buttons, one power button and an emergency stop. The rear of the machine has a USB port, a power port and a port for an optional rotary attachment which I don't happen to have. The machine ships with a 163mm lens which gives us a working area of 110 by 110 mm Other lenses are available that take the working area up to 175 by 175 mm To focus the laser we have a handle available on the top of the column there that moves the head up and down. Two spots are projected from a low powered secondary diode laser and as the head moves up and down you'll see these spots moving. And when they converge into one then the laser is in focus. Now this type of machine is known as a galvo laser and it differs from other types of lasers such as standard diode lasers which move the laser head around physically on a gantry system such as you can see here. Instead, a Galvo laser has a pair of motorised mirrors that live behind the lens and these move back and forward very, very quickly indeed, reflecting and moving the laser beam in X and Y across the workpiece. And the result of this is very much quicker engraving times, up to a theoretical limit of 10,000 millimetres per second. OK, enough of the waffle, let's start shooting some stuff with lasers. I'm going to start by engraving this lump of mild steel, but the first question I had was what settings do I need to use? We've got a number of variables we can play with, speed, power, frequency, and the number of passes. The machine does ship with a spreadsheet of suggested settings for a number of different materials. These will get you in the ballpark, but to really dial in those settings, Lightburn ships with a really handy feature. With just a few clicks, you can output a settings matrix. Here I've chosen speed versus power. So the first square in our grid is going to be 100 millimeters a second at 10% power. It will then move on to 20% power at 100 millimeters a second, 30, 40, and 50, and so on before running through those same power settings at the next speed, which is 200 millimetres a second, and on it goes up from there. So it's easy to see here that using these matrices is a great way of dialing your settings in for each of the materials that you're going to be using. On my old steel here, I like the look of these darker tones. So I'm going to be going for something in between 100 and 200 mil per second, probably 150 mil and about 60 or 70% power. It's a good idea to output these matrices uh, for all of the materials that you're going to be using with the machine. So far, I've been testing with mild steel, aluminium and also brass, but the machine is also capable of marking other metals such as stainless steel, copper and even silver and gold. There's a full list on the product page and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Next up, I want to try engraving some text to see what kind of resolution we can get and also see how small we can realistically make that text and still have it be legible. And I have to say, I'm impressed. The text is super crisp, the infill's really deep and black, and the text is still legible even at really tiny sizes. The text starts at 5mm tall at the top there and goes all the way down to just 1mm tall at the bottom. I then tried out a couple of different techniques, the first being running a cleaning pass after the initial burn. This involves running a second pass at a higher speed with a lower power and a higher frequency. 
This removes the black infill and gives us a cleaner look. The scorching that you can see around the edges of the letters can easily be removed just by rubbing it with your finger after the cut's finished. And this is the end result. I also tried a different version where I did five passes instead of one, resulting in a deeper engraving. Of the two, I think I prefer the shallow engraving actually, but my overall favourite is the one with the deep black infill, although it's good to demonstrate the kind of looks we can get just by changing a few settings. Anyway, enough playing, let's get on with some practical jobs around the workshop. I've got these change wheels for my mini lathe, and as you can see, the guy that stamped the number of teeth into the wheel didn't take an awful lot of care about it. I think it's supposed to read 52, but we can do better than that. This is Lightburn. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on it, but I figured it couldn't hurt to have a quick look. All I've done is create a text box with 52 T in it, and uh, I've selected the settings that I want for the laser. Next, I select this frame button. That projects with a low power diode laser, either a bounding box or a contour of the shape to be burned onto the workpiece, allowing us to position the engraving somewhat accurately. Now that's much clearer than the stamps and it only took about two minutes to do. I'm sure we've all got a hundred jobs like this that need doing around the workshop. And one thing I've been meaning to get around to for a long time is to sort out my tool holders. I like to number my tool holders so that I can use them with the tool library on my lathe. I've been using a label printer up to now, but that's less than ideal. After a while, the labels start to get hard to read and they start peeling off. So let's use the laser to make it a bit more durable. We're just gonna hop over to the software again very quickly so that I can show you a technique that I use that aids in layout. We've got two different drawing elements here. We've got our rectangle and we've got our numbers. The rectangle represents the exact size of the tool holder and the numbers are the uh, numbers that we're gonna burn, obviously. And you'll note that they're different colors and that's because they're on different layers. And in light burn, things on different layers can have specific settings. So in this case, everything on the black layer is gonna have a specific set of burn settings and everything on the red layer, I've chosen not to output at all. So we'll see it in our bounding box, which is going to help us with layout, but it won't get burned. So it's simply a case of aligning our tool with the uh, bounding box, and then our burn marks should be precisely where we want them. So that's 14 tool holders engraved in about 20 minutes with the minimum of effort. The engravings are going to be a lot more durable than the labels and I think they look a lot better as well, so I'm pleased. So let's move on now to something a bit different. A while ago I made this finger plate clamping tool and being a collector of antique tools and equipment, I often find myself looking at items in my collection and wondering when they were made and how they were made and by whom. And to that end, I thought it might be a fun little idea to leave a few clues to some imaginary person in the distant future that might come across this tool and wonder where it came from. So after I'd finished the tool, I made this box with my maker's mark on it and when I made the tool. Now that's all well and good, but what happens if the box gets lost or broken? Well, now we've got an answer to that, haven't we?
So now there's definitely no argument about who made it or when, but what about how? The finger plate is essentially a small clamping device and consists of the main plate upon which you place... Okay, so maybe that was a little bit of a vanity project there, but let's move on and make something that's actually useful. Where I think this machine is really gonna come into its own and provide the most value for me is in the engraving of scales like you see here on this adjustable V-block. And if I could achieve results like these, then I think that would take my tool making to the next level and allow me to accomplish things that would be very difficult or impossible with other methods. At this point, I don't know if this laser is gonna be accurate enough to be able to create scales that are gonna be truly useful. So I've headed over to Illustrator here and I've, I've created some scales, a metric one and an imperial one, and we're gonna burn these into a piece of brass and make ourselves a workshop scale or ruler as we like to say here in the UK as a test. So that's our brass prepared with those rubberized Kratex sticks and now we're going to line it up on the laser. I left a little bit of room on the end there that we're going to remove with the mill in a moment. And the reason for that is that I'd like to take direct measurements with the end of the ruler without having to account for any gap before the scale starts, like you see on some rulers. And of course, now we have the means, we may as well engrave our maker's mark on our new tool. And here is our finished ruler. We have our imperial scale on one side of the ruler and the metric scale on the other. And once again, I'm super impressed. The level of detail and accuracy that this laser is able to produce is far beyond anything I could achieve with manual methods. The smallest of these fractions, for instance, is just two millimeters tall or about 80 thou, which is just mind blown to me. Now it's all well and good looking pretty, but if our 100 millimeter scale doesn't measure exactly 100 millimeters, then it's all for nothing. Now in the video here, I think we've got a little bit of lens parallax, but in person, take my word for it, this is absolutely bang on. Now let's check the imperial side. Don't actually have an imperial scale with which to check this, but I've opened up my calipers to exactly four inches and we'll see how that lines up. And once again, it's spot on, meaning that we've got a functional tool ready for use. And now for something a little different. A while back, I created this conversion chart to give away to my Patreon supporters. We have fractional inches set out in three columns. That's uh, 16 30 seconds and 60 fourths, along with decimal and uh, metric conversions. So I figured it might be a fun exercise to miniaturize this and then burn it with a laser onto a metal business card. Yeah. 
And again, I'm really impressed with the way these have turned out. They're so clear. If you'd like to get your hands on one of these, I should be sending one of these out along with a copy of the wall mounted conversion chart and some stickers to anyone that supports me on Patreon at the mid level and above. Links in the description below. Now a quick word about laser safety. When engraving some materials, such as these business cards for instance, quite a lot of smoke and fumes can be produced, which are quite nasty and should definitely not be breathed in. And in an ideal situation, you would vent these to the outside. But sometimes this might not be practical. And for these situations, EM Smart has produced a fume extractor. We've got this steel box here that houses a series of filters and a powerful fan, an electronic speed control and an omnidirectional hose. And hopefully you can see in this next shot here that it is actually quite effective. I'll start with the fan switched off and you can see the smoke going everywhere and then as soon as I switch the fan on it all does appear to be sucked into the fume extractor. They also met this Perspex enclosure with a laser safety glass which keeps the machine protected and also helps to contain those fumes. Even if using the enclosure you should still continue to wear your laser safety glasses which are included with the machine. It's got really good access all around via these magnetic doors and even has a hatch in the top to allow access for the focusing mechanism. And it can of course work in conjunction with the fume extractor. So in conclusion, have we answered the following question? Can a laser engraver be a valuable addition to the home workshop? And I think I can safely say that the answer to that is a resounding yes. I've been super impressed with this machine and uh, I've got a number of projects planned in the future where this is going to play an integral part in the build. For instance, I'd like to make micrometer hand wheels like these, although that would require me getting a rotary attachment for this machine. If you'd like to see that, do let me know in the comments and be sure to hit that subscribe button. So what do I think of the EM Smart Basic 1? In a nutshell, I love it. It's got great build quality, it's easy to use, and I think the quality of the engravings speak for themselves. I think some of the accessories such as the fume extractor and the enclosure are rather expensive for what they are, but the machine itself, I think, provides outstanding value for money. If you're interested in purchasing one for yourself, they ship either from a US warehouse or a European warehouse, and there's a web store for each. I'll leave links to both of those in the description. If you use the discount code Jonesy Makes at checkout, you get an extra $100 or 100 euros off the purchase price. And you can even use that discount Discount code for their more expensive MOPA lasers. If you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.